So in this walkthrough, I want to give you a little bit of a starting point for thinking about what happens when your app runs, like what code is being executed, what are some of the important files that you need to think about. And we'll also talk a little bit about how to use logging in Android to find out what's going on with your app as it runs. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do now, I'm assuming that you've installed the MP1 test suites, but we're otherwise ready to go. So you're set up, things are working. Some of you have a real device that you can use to run Android apps on. If you do, I would strongly suggest that you use it. It will be much faster and more pleasant than using the emulator. I'm gonna use the emulator for these examples so you can see what's happening, but don't you know, let me discourage you from installing this on your own phone. It's totally safe and it will work fine. And again, I think you'll have more fun interacting with it that way if you have an Android device. Okay, so uh, let's run the app first. So I'm running the starter code that we've given you. I've created a virtual device that's a Pixel 4 at API 30. I, I could create something else, but whatever, you know, the, this device is gonna work fine. So I'm gonna select that run configuration and hit play. And this is slow. Um, this is going to take a few seconds uh, to, to, to get going. Um, you know, it's going to start up and, you know, things are going to happen. And uh, particularly the first time that you're launching your uh, virtual device, it's going to take a minute. And it also might start up in the background. So you can see, okay, there it is, right? Um, so this is an emulated Android device. It allows you to, I can use the keyboard. Um, I can use the mouse to do various things. Um, it tries to behave very similarly to how a real Android device would behave, except that it's running on your computer. Now, you know, this can slow down your computer a little bit. It might not be super responsive. That's why I was mentioning before that for those of you with an Android device, you might want to consider using it. Um, but this gives us a sense of what our app looks like. And so um, once we're finished, this is going to be an app that allows you to browse and rate courses in the computer science department. Right now, we have some work to do. So the numbers that are being shown are actually course numbers that are valid in the CS department. Like we have a course called 102, we have a course called 419. These, we have a course called 125, right? You're taking it. These numbers are for the, um, the spring 2021 semester. So, so this semester, um, okay? But you know, there's a couple things. So obviously this data display is not particularly useful. Like just knowing that the number is 496 doesn't tell me much about the course. So if I was trying to browse courses, I would want to see the title at least, right? Um, and the other thing you'll notice is that the search feature doesn't work. And these are two of the things that we're going to address on this checkpoint. Once you're finished, this view will, first of all, it'll be sorted properly. So it'll be sorted in order of course number, which is a useful way to think about things. Um, we'll also get it to the point where the titles of the course are shown in the display, and we'll get the search feature to work. That's all we're gonna do for this checkpoint. That might not seem like much, but uh, trust me, when you're getting started on Android, there's a lot of things to think about. So we're gonna go slow and we're gonna do things one step at a time. Okay, let me walk you through a little bit about what happens when your app actually launches. So I'm gonna go over here to the left. I'm in the project view. That's the view that I prefer to use when I'm using Android Studio. Uh, I like to see where the files are and things like this. Some of you may want to use the, the app view or whatever, yeah, the Android view. You can do that if you want. It might be a little hard to follow along, but you know, this is what I tend to use. Um, the, so we're gonna look at two files here. Um, so the, the files that uh, essentially represent what your app does are in app source main. Um, the code files are in the Java directory, and then there's also a, a, uh, these other two directories called res. This has information about the layout that's used by your app, like what the screen actually looks like, and we'll have to do some things in some of these files later on, and also on this checkpoint to get things to work. There's also a resources directory. That contains, in this case, um, information that's being used by the app about the courses that are being offered by the CS department this semester. Okay, uh, but let's stay in the Java code. This is the code that controls how our app behaves. And there's, there's two files I wanna show you here. So there's this application directory and inside the application directory um, is a file called Courseable Application. This code runs when the app starts up. And in contrast with another piece of code that we're gonna look at in a minute, it's always available throughout the lifetime of the app. So as long as the app's running, 
this there was an instance of this Corsable application. Now, what's in here is just Java code, and it's Java code that utilizes some of the concepts that you've been learning about recently. So, for example, you'll see that this class extends another class. Um, so we are overriding some of that class's methods. In particular, we're using this override annotation on a method called onCreate. This method is called when your app starts. There's also like an on destroy, I think, and some other methods um, that are part of what is uh, referred to in Android as the application lifestyle. Uh, lifestyle, no, life cycle, there it is. Um, applications probably have a lifestyle too, but we're concerned with their life cycle. Um, and there's some things that are going on in this, and, and we're not going to talk about all of them right now, but I just wanted uh, sort of giving you the lay of the land at a high level. Okay. Um, and then, so the application, you can think of there being an instance of the application class whenever your application is running. But depending on how your user interacts with the application, they might see a different thing, right? We refer to these as screens, and in Android, they are represented by what are called activities. So the next thing that happens when your app starts up is that screen is displayed that has a list of course numbers on it. That screen, Again, in Android, uh, Android refers to these as activities. An activity corresponds to one particular thing that the user sees on the screen. And so this code, and again, we're going to need to do some work in here on this assignment. This is code that is started uh, when we are using the screen that shows the list of courses. Later on in the project, as we go forward over the next couple months, you'll create another activity from scratch that represents a different way to view the data that we're using. But for now, we're just gonna focus on this one view that shows a list of courses and improving it so that it works properly. All right, so uh, there's some stuff in here we already you know, looked at last time. There's a set, this set title method that we fixed um, and, and we're doing okay. Um, so let me show you, um, you might wonder like, you know, um, this is complicated, there's a lot going on here. How do I find out what's going on in my application? And one of the really useful ways of doing this is to use something that's built into Android called Android Logging. Um, and so let me show you how to do that. So uh, if you use system.out.println, you will still be able to see the output. But the better thing to do on Android is to use Android's logging features. So let me show you how to do that. So I start with log. And then you'll see I have a choice of different, uh, these are logging levels. And the idea here is that the logging system allows us to uh, display messages that have different levels of urgency associated with them. So when I'm debugging, I might use log.d, which prints a debugging message. Um, if it's an error, something went wrong and I want information about it, I use, might use log.e, which is for error messages. In this case, I'm gonna use log.i. Now, unlike uh, system.out.println, I actually need to provide two pieces of data. The first one is what's called a tag. That's used to organize the logging messages so that I can find them in the output. And the second one is um, a message that get, actually gets printed. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, just use this to identify when this runs, okay? I also need to import this. So to do this, I, I come here, I hit control uh, space, and I import uh, android.logging, and you'll see that that just added this import up here for me automatically. I could have also typed it, but uh, it's much more convenient usually to just uh, use that control enter, and there's probably, a, or control space, there's probably a different shortcut if you're on Windows, um, but that works out really nicely. Okay, so now I've got this startup tag, and I'm gonna do something similar over in my main activity, because I wanna look at how both of these work. So way down here at the bottom, and you know what, I'll do it, uh, right up, oh wait, so this is gonna cause a problem because the first thing I do is I have to call super on create first. I'll put that right afterwards. Um, and now I'll go over to main activity. I'll put something similar, except uh, I'll use main activity on create. So I can tell the difference between these two methods. Okay, so I'm gonna shut down my emulator. I'm gonna restart. I'm gonna open this up again. And what I and when I want to see log messages, I need to go down and I need to open up what's called the log cat tab down here. Now, the first time you open this, you're probably going to have a heart attack because there is like all sorts of information just flying by. Um, and the reason for this is that initially it's showing you all the logs generated by everything running on your emulated Android device. And there's actually quite a bit of things going on. 
Um, you know, some of you noticed on the last one of the last walkthroughs, I said, oh, don't worry about these error messages. Um, try reading the Android logs sometimes for all of the things that are running on your device, and you'll see that stuff is going wrong all the time. And it's sort of amazing that anything ever works, but it does. Um, once I start up uh, the application, you should notice that my Logcat tab by default is now only showing me log messages generated by my application. And this is really useful um, as you run, as you start to do some testing with the emulator or with your real device, because it allows you to bug to debug things like crashes. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to look for startup, and you'll see now these two log messages that I inserted. And you'll see the first one that gets run, as promised, is in this Courseable application. That gets called, and then the next thing that happens is this log message in main activity is printed, and that's because the first thing Android does is it creates an instance of the application class that we define and calls the onCreate method. And the second, blah, blah, the second thing it does is it launches the main screen for the application, which is called the main activity, and displays use that to display the screen. Um, and so that's why we see those messages printed uh, one after another. Okay, so uh, one thing I'll point out is like if I, we, we could kind of experiment with like what happens if I restart the application, you'll see that main activity does not get uh, called again. Um, there's, I think there's a way, let's see here, if I swipe away, and then I relaunch it from, so that's kind of the equivalent of shutting down the activity, and then I relaunch it from the main screen, you'll see that it actually starts up again, and I see both messages printed again. Um, so this gives you a little sense of where things are uh, in, the, in the activity life cycle. Um, okay, the last thing I want to point out, so now we have a sense of actually what's happening, the, the beginnings of a sense of what's happening when our application starts up. The next thing I want to point out is, uh, I'll turn off my emulator here, or I'll just shut this down. How about that? Oh, looks like it's already stopped. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to point out is, um, how does Android know this? How does Android know that, you know, my class is called Courseable Application, and how does it know what the main screen for my app is? And this information is in this file called AndroidManifest.xml. And I don't want to, you know, freak you out. This is another, there's a lot of scary stuff in here and we're going to go slow and we're going to ask a lot of questions and we're going to talk things through and we're just going to, you know, learn by doing and not be afraid of stuff like this. Um, this is a formatted information in a format called XML. And this is information that Android uses to find out things about my app. And let me show you a couple of the things in here that I've told it that allows it to start up properly. So for example, the application class is named in this file. So this is how Android knows what class represents my application class for the app that we're working on. Other thing is, um, how does it know, you know, what app, like what activity to start? In the future, we're gonna create other activities that will correspond to different screens but when the app launches up for the first time and the user hasn't interacted with it, how does Android know which activity to show? And that's right here. And the idea is that this information that's shown uh, essentially says when the app is launched, this is the activity that should be shown. In a few weeks, we're gonna create a second activity that's not shown when the app is launched but is shown as re in, in response to ac uh, actions that the user performs with our main activity. So we'll, and we'll show you how to do that together. Okay, so um, in summary, we've looked at what happens when the app starts up. Um, we've looked at a couple of important files in our project. This is a file called the application uh, class, and that holds information that's available to the application the whole time it's running. And then we looked at something called the main activity class, and this represents information required to show one screen. So that screen where the courses are being listed, that's where we're gonna be doing our work for this empty checkpoint. Um, that represents uh, the code that is required to represent this is in this main activity class. And we'll actually have to make some changes to this class in order to finish uh, this particular checkpoint.